Patrice Lumumba, the Congo's first prime minister and a key figure in the fight against colonialism in Africa, was tortured and executed by firing squad, and his body was dissolved in sulfuric acid by Belgium and U.S. allies because he attempted to protect his country's minerals. Today, there is turmoil in Congo, and genocide has occurred. Patrice Lumumba was born on July 2, 1925, in Onalua, Kasai department of the Belgian Congo. With only an elementary education, Lumumba rose to become one of Africa's most outspoken critics of colonialism. Early in childhood, he became interested in grassroots union operations and joined the Postal Union. As Secretary General of the Union, Lumumba began publishing essays criticizing Belgian colonial rule and pushing for independence and a unified, centralized Congo. His writings reached beyond ethnic and regional attachments to a national audience. Lumumba joined the Belgian Liberal Party in 1955 after becoming the regional head of the Circle of Stanleyville. In 1956, he was arrested, charged with embezzling union funds, and sentenced to two years in prison. Lumumba was released after 12 months and went on to become the sales director of a brewery in Leopoldville. To strengthen his political base, Lumumba helped establish the movement National Congolese MNC, a broad-based movement that appealed to people of many ethnicities and regions. The next year, he represented the multinational corporation at the Pan-African Conference in Accra, Ghana. His unrelenting attacks against Belgian control quickly weakened the MNC, resulting in a leadership split in July 1959. Undaunted, Lumumba insisted on the total abolition of Belgian control. He was arrested in October 1959 for allegedly inciting anti-colonial riots and condemned to six months in prison. There were protests in Egypt and other parts of the world calling for Patrice Lumumba's release from prison in 1960. Shortly after, the Belgian government convened a conference in Brussels to consider the future of Congo. In response to the MNC's threat of boycott, the government released Lumumba. In Brussels, Lumumba loudly denounced Belgian rule and urged for speedy independence. Belgium, convinced that Congolese independence was imminent, designated June 30, 1960, as Independence Day, and May as their first general election. The movement National Congolese won the majority in the May 1960 general election, and Lumumba became Congo's prime minister, while his political rival Joseph Kasavubu was appointed president. Lumumba's vehement condemnation of colonialism sparked outrage, not just in Belgium, but also in the United States and Great Britain. Unfortunately, his term was brief and fraught with troubles. Congo's transformation from a Belgian colony to an independent country took place in the context of Africa's greater decolonization process. It also took place during the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union and their respective allies. In Congo, 1960 was an eventful year. In June 1960, the Republic of Congo celebrated its independence from Belgium, with officers and officials from Belgium and the United States present. During King Boldwin of Belgium's speech, he expressed admiration for King Leopold II, despite the fact that his rule over the Congo resulted in the deaths of over 10 million Congolese citizens. He suggested that the Congolese do not change what Leopold has done for the country, du Congo constitue l'aboutissement de l'œuvre conçue par le génie du roi Léopold II, entreprise par lui avec un courage tenace et continuée avec persévérance par la Belgique. Elle marque une heure décisive dans les destinées, non seulement du Congo lui-même, mais je n'hésite pas à l'affirmer de l'Afrique tout entière. King Baldwin's statements were both callous and mindful of the cruelty faced by the Congolese people under King Leopold II. The king's viewpoint was contested by the recently elected prime minister, who also reaffirmed that the Belgian king had no more say in their affairs. Combattant de l'indépendance, aujourd'hui victorieux. Je vous salue au nom du gouvernement congolais. À vous tous, mes amis, qui avez lutté sans relâche à nos côtés, je vous demande de faire de ce 30 juin 1960 une date illustre que vous garderez ineffaçablement gravée dans vos cœurs, une date 
dont vous enseignerez avec fierté la signification à vos enfants, pour que ceux-ci, à leur tour, fassent connaître à leurs fils et à leurs petits-fils l'histoire glorieuse de notre lutte pour la liberté. King Leopold found Lumumba's statement offensive. Lumumba, a key actor in Congo's independence fight who advocated for a highly centralized government, served as prime minister in a fragile government of compromise, led by Joseph Kasavubu, who supported a less centralized approach with greater autonomy for Congo's provinces. Almost immediately after independence, the new administration faced an army mutiny, which was quickly followed by the secession of Katanga, a strategically important mineral-rich region led by Moise Tiambe, another Congolese leader who disagreed with Lumumba's ideology. Belgium sent troops ostensibly to safeguard Belgian nationals in Congo during the upheaval, but they landed primarily in Katanga, where they supported Tishambi's separatist authority and acquired access to the country's mineral wealth. The government asked the United Nations UN for help, and while peacekeeping soldiers were sent to Congo, they did not interfere in Katanga. Lumumba immediately sought support from the Soviet Union, which sent technical experts to his government. The Soviet incursion concerned the U.S. and its allies. Kasavubu fired Lumumba as prime minister on September 5th, but Lumumba protested it and in turn declared Kasavubu to be ousted, resulting in two parallel governments for a time. This prompted a military intervention on September 14th, led by Congolese Colonel Joseph Mobutu, later known as Mobutu Siseko, who backed Kasavubu's efforts to keep Lumumba at bay. Lumumba was placed under house arrest, but he managed to flee and try to reach another region of the country where he had more support. He was, however, apprehended by Mobutu's forces with the help of the CIA and other Belgian officials in early December and held at a military camp in Thysville. Lumumba's adversaries worried that the camp was not secure enough to detain him and demanded that he be moved. On January 17, 1961, Lumumba and two friends Joseph Okido and Maurice Mpolo were flown to Katanga, the political stronghold of Tishambi. Soldiers battered him and his colleagues during their flight. When they arrived in Katanga, they were transported to a secluded villa where they were beaten again by the CIAA and Belgian forces as the Congolese forces secured the villa before meeting with Tshambi and other Katangan authorities. Lumumba and his friends were then executed by a Katangan firing squad with CIA supervision and in the presence of Katangan and Belgian authorities and officers. The victims were subsequently dumped into shallow graves. A Katangan government official later ordered that the bodies be removed. At that time, a Belgian police officer headed a team that looked for the graves, dug up the bodies, chopped them into bits, and dissolved as many body parts as they could with sulfuric acid. Everything that remained was set on fire. Although there were speculations about Lumumba's death after it occurred, no formal notification was issued for nearly a month. When the Katangan administration announced it on February 13th, they stated that Lumumba had fled from their custody and had been apprehended and slain by furious villagers. This account of events was challenged almost immediately, resulting in worldwide demonstrations and suspicions regarding the circumstances surrounding his death persisted for decades. When Patrice Lumumba was killed in January 1961, tens of thousands of Serbians stormed Belgium's embassy screaming, glory to Lumumba, death to colonialism, freedom for the enslaved people, glory to the fighter for the freedom of African people. Over 80 people were injured during these protests citizens of Egypt, who had earlier protested for the release of Lumumba, were furious when the prime minister was murdered. Lumumba had earlier on asked then-Egyptian president, Gamal Abdel Nasser, to take care of his family before his arrest on December 1, 1960. President Nasser fulfilled his promise by seeing to the safety of Lumumba's family throughout his ordeal. Patrice Lumumba wanted full independence for his country free from Belgium or any form of Western imperialism. He became a martyr and a symbol of Congolese and African liberation. In February 2002, in response to a Belgian Commission report that implicated Belgium in Lumumba's death, the Belgian government accepted moral responsibility and issued an official apology. Lumumba remains an inspiration to African politicians. During the Congo's 2006 presidential election, several prominent political parties referenced Lumumba's legacy. His last words in public were, my dear countrymen, 
In joy and in sorrow, I will always be with you. It was together with you that I fought to free my country from foreign rule. Together with you, I am fighting to strengthen our national independence. Together with you, I will fight to preserve the integrity and national unity of the Republic of the Congo. Neither cruelty, nor violence, nor torture will make me beg for mercy, because I prefer to die with my head raised high, with unshakable faith. In my country's predestination, rather than live in submission, forsaking my sacred principles. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Please subscribe and turn on the notification icon for similar videos in the future.